Pinky Bobby will be making his NFL appearance as the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars just a few short weeks after Urban Meyer's release. We're going to be running Houston Dan Coley's playbook and Jim Harbaugh's defensive playbook. We are starting off right where the season is currently. Uh, we're going to sim the last few games and see how it goes. Maybe we'll get the top pick and go from there. Obviously, we have Trevor Lawrence at the helm, who will obviously be at the helm. We need to get a backup for him as well. I like the depth we have at running back between ETN and Robinson. Definitely need to get a fullback on the roster. Receiver-wise, Marvin Jones, I think we need to get out of here. I do want to bring DJ Chark back if it's a friendly enough deal, cheap enough. Hopefully, we can get him to develop a little bit further. Chanel, I think, could actually be really utilized a lot like Carolina uses uh, Curtis Samuel. And we'll see how the rest of them goes. I am interested in Treadwell coming back as well, seeing if he can compete, but uh, we'll see. Tight end, we don't have a whole lot of youth here. Um, worth developing, I should say. So we'll, we'll uh, try to evaluate that in the offseason and see if we can improve it. Offensive line. I don't think we're too bad here. If we can bring our starters back and develop Walker Little and Barch, I think we'll have a solid line for quite a while. We might even consider moving Barch to right guard to get him some more snaps. Either way, we need to get younger at center and right guard for sure. We have a lot of uh, defensive ends for sure. Although I'm not sure who's going to be staying, who's going to be going. We kind of have to see who produces. Uh, one defensive tackle, it's not going to cut it. So we got to get that position filled out in the offseason. Chase Yon has to prove he can develop some. Where he, like he's 22, he's got plenty of time to do it. But I want to give him the starting job going forward. But he's got to produce something. Jack is obviously our defensive headpiece. He's our best player. Damien Wilson is solid as well. I like Shaq Quarterman. Uh, hopefully we can get him improved a little bit and he can stay a, a big part of the depth here. Josh Allen is our best edge threat, period. <laughs> I mean, I almost want to move him to defensive end so we have that threat down there, but I think we can use him better at linebacker. We obviously need to get more depth at outside linebacker, younger, better <laughs> cornerbacks. Uh, we have plenty, but I would like to add maybe a guy or two in free agency. I don't know whose contracts are up quite yet, but I don't know if Lawson's going to be coming back or Clay Brooks. Clay Brooks is a possibility. We, we only need to add one or two guys. Safeties. I like who we have here. I like Wingard and Cisco. Those are definitely going to be our starters going forward anyways. Uh, we do need to get some depth behind them. Other than that, that's basically the roster. As far as contract offers go, Andrew Norwell has to come back. We cannot afford to get worse at offensive line. As well as DJ Chark, I'm interested in getting him back. It looks like it's going to be a cheap enough deal. 19 over 3. Certainly, we live with that. I'm not sold on AJ Can, but if we can get him to hold over for a year and get some young guy in there, maybe Barch, to develop a little bit further, I have no problem doing that. Robinson, we could do worse than Robinson. Uh, same thing. We can get him to stay for a year or two. Cheap deal. He'll be here. All right. On the DJ chart. Gonna come out to like six a year. Yep. Um, I'll give him a little bit of a buff down here and put him at 1.8. <clears throat> Hopefully that gets him to come back. I think he could be a huge piece for us. And he signs. I think we'll let Wilson test and we might bring him back. I do want to bring, uh, bring Brian back. He's one of our youngest guys on the D-line and we cannot afford to get any older there. We'll give him a small deal. One year, three mil. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I'm not interested in bringing back Gotis back. Wingard has to come back. I think we've really utilized his speed in the secondary with Cisco. O'Shaughnessy, 
isn't coming back. Much as I love Tavon Austin, uh, if he comes back, he'll be coming back in the free agency. We're not offering him a deal right now. I do want to offer Laquan Treadwell a deal. Whether he stays and becomes the four, third, fourth guy, we'll see. Uh, I think we need to attack a couple <laughs> receivers in the offseason. <clears throat> and he stays. We have plenty of running back depth. We can spare him. Chatley, I do not think is coming back. He's 6'6 overall. 30 years old, he's only going to get worse. I would be interested in bringing Godwin back, although I'm not going to pay him right now. We'll see what's in the free agency. We'll sign Cam now, and Cam will regress from something. We're going to sim the final few weeks of this season and see where we end up with the uh, offseason. All right, we're back here at the end of the season now. We finished 3-14, and 14, winning one of our last three matchups and accumulating half of the wins that Urban Meyer had while at the helm. So we're going to advance from here to uh, staff moves, actually. Um, wasn't a whole lot of great here, actually. Defense was terrible. Offense was worse. So we are going to go through here. We're going to fire our coordinators, and we'll see who pops up. Brent Perkins. See you later. Mark Anderson, nice knowing you. I think we're going to choose to bring in Ed Green. We are running Houston's offensive playbook, so for now, Ed Green will get a chance. And for defense coordinator, we are running Baltimore's defensive playbook, but I do want to bring the Pittsburgh mentality here to our defense. Tough. So we'll bring Craig Taylor in. We'll go ahead and spend some of our uh, staff points here. I want to get as many development points as we can to develop the young talent we have. So we're going for after school tutoring. This is our current playoff seedings. Uh, Patriots with the bye, Green Bay with the bye. We'll send ahead and see who wins the, uh, the ship. And it's Kansas City and Green Bay Packers in the Super Bowl finale. Looks like the playoffs are filled with one score victories. Find out who wins. And Kansas sneaks out with the trophy over Green Bay. Patrick Mahomes, MVP of the game. Tom Brady wins MVP of the NFL. Zach Taylor, Coach of the Year. Tom Brady, Player of the Year. Nick Bosa, Defense Player of the Year. Najee Harris and Mike Parsons with Offensive Defensive Rookie of the Year awards. All right, and we're back with the first mock draft of the season. They have us taking Buddha Brown, who's actually on my short list. I really like his skill set, and we'll get into scouting more here soon. We did not go week by week. Picked up right where the season left off. So this class is just as new to me. An extremely physically gifted guy. Good play rec. Great power moves. Solid block shredding. If he can do finesse moves at all, I think this is a really good pick. Although I wasn't planning on taking anybody top five. Possibly uh, trading down out of it. I think might be the best way to go to get us... More picks, more young talent, and get this team rolling. These are the 2021 retirements. We're going to attempt to bring Damian Wilson back. We need bodies in the middle. We do not have the young young guys to step up or who are ready to step up. So we need Wilson to stay around for another year or two to try to get some replacements in there. He doesn't want it. AJ can I would definitely bring back for five a year. It prevents us from having to spend our high pick on a first round guy for offensive line. Oh, I guess not. Uh, we'll see what we have a kicker in free agency. I think that's everybody. I do like some of these lower rated guys, but we gotta get some higher rated people in here. We can't have a roster full of 62s. 
It appears nobody is interested in Marvin Jones Jr., and I can't say I'm surprised. So, come around the new year, we'll add him to the trade block and see if we can get him out of here. Alright, here's a look at the top free agents of the class. Ron Armstead is super interesting, although I do not want to spend our cap space on the left tackle, and I think we have a solid enough. I would be interested in bringing Dante Jackson in. We're going to try to bring Patrick Ricard in here to get the run game going even better. Hopefully we can uh, steal him away from Seattle, I think. We're going to look to bring in Brian Winters for a year so we have a body at right guard. Right now we have absolutely no body. We're going to shoot to steal Dante Jackson from the free agency. Getting him in here will help hopefully create more turnovers. So more chances for Trevor Lawrence. Eric Ebron is a solid route running tight end where he can hopefully be an outlet for Trevor Lawrence. As long as those drop passes don't impact us too much, I think we'll be all right. Linville Joseph, just in case you're trying to get a big body down low to help stop the run up the middle. James Washington is going to be directly competing for that number three, number four spot. And we'll see who comes out on top. We're going to try to bring in Jacoby Brissett to back up Trevor Lawrence, so at least we have a solid body behind him. And Darren Lee for outside linebacker, because if we can't get to him, we're going to at least make sure they can't run around the pocket. We got Jacoby. James Washington, Darren Lee, Rodrigo Blankenship, and we lost out on Jackson, unfortunately. In mock draft two, we're still projected to take Buda Brown. I wouldn't be opposed to it. <laughs> With the signing of Jacob Brissett, we're going to be releasing Kyle Luetta. And CJ Beathard. We're going to try to bring in Jamie Collins Sr. As a middle linebacker, so hopefully the team's supposed to think twice about running up the gut with the hard-hitting hit power 85. So the number one overall pick they're projecting in both mock drafts so far is Buddha Brown. Uh, isn't supposed to go till 33, so I'm not wanting to reach that high and take him, although I do love his skill set. We're going to look around at a couple other options for our first round pick. I do want to shore up our D-line so we can actually get some pass rusher there. Uh, Josh Allen isn't enough by himself, and Chase Allen is not developed enough to assist him often enough so we need to get somebody down low that can actually do the job neville clark actually had a really great combine and pro day i was not expecting him to run a 454 and a 6.93 three cone drill i mean i know more than enough on him to say i would take him with a finesse a pursuit and a play rec with b awareness i think he's obviously solid enough at finesse rushing to get selected in the first round. Buda Brown's obviously on our short list as well with A power move, A tackle, a C block shed. Really solid combine and pro day. And again, somebody I know more than enough of to select. Hopefully we'd be able to steal him in the early second or late first. And these defensive ends are quick. Javier Sims was somebody I found that wasn't overly talented but very well rounded with C's. I did not pick my scouting focus players earlier in the season we just sent past it McCree's yet another freakish defensive end out here with f stamina though we don't know nearly as much about him but he would be a top five selection glenn lambert was yet another fallback option added to the favorite list in case our guys were not there looks solid enough but again we do not know a whole lot about him at center, we got Gregory, Bu Gregory Buckley with A stamina, A run block power, A lead block. I might use a focus point on him to see if he's better than the other players I've found at the position. John Griffin is another center with A impact block, A finesse pass block, B pass block, and B pass block power. So we know it at worst, he's a really solid pass blocker. Chris Briscoe is probably my favorite right guard right now. Um, it's going to be really hard to pass on. If we do trade down from the number one overall spot, spot, I'm not above taking another receiver at the bottom half of the first round. So we scouted a couple of them. Uh, and these are just a couple of my favorite guys. Thomas Spring, we don't know a lot about him again. And these guys are super scouted. I like Parker for his route running and run blocking. I thought it was interesting enough. Sermons is a super versatile guy that looks like he's going to have potential for catch and runs. We literally know nothing about Byron here, except he can run a short route. So, 
Cortez Stovall is probably the most well-rounded selection that we have or with the information we have. So right now, I think he's probably my favorite to be taken. Dwayne Ballard has great size, and I assume he's going to have solid enough speed for, well, maybe not, four, five, three. We'll see. The six, five, my biggest concern, though, is he has F injury. The D tackle, we got Oscar Fox here, 6'2", 301. Obviously, a superior combine, rounded skill set, B impact, B power move, B block shredding. So he could be a huge help to us stopping the run. Steven Patterson, 6'5", 304. Another great athlete of defensive tackles. A finesse move, A play rec would be a more unique skill set coming down the middle. We don't know his block shredding though. But I don't know that as interesting as he is, if he's there in the third, we might select him. But I think we need to worry about stopping the run more. In week three of the offseason, we get Leon Jacobs, Austin, Winters, Cole, Collins, and uh, our full back here, Ricard. We'll go straight to selecting our private workout guys. So we decide to go with Cortez Stovall, John Griffin, and Buddha Brown as our focus players. I want to confirm Buddha Brown isn't worth the top five pick. It looks like we're going to lose out on Eric Ebron, so we're going to have to find another route to go. Then we're going to bring in Jared Cook for a year. He provides the same kind of upside with route running and providing a quick outlet. We're actually going to straight up release Marvin Jones Jr. We saved five million in cap space, so we're just going to move on from him. And we got both Jared Cook and Linville Joseph, so on to my draft three. And it still has a selecting Buddha Brown, but we got him at 100% now, so we know everything there is about him. I think I was right. The F injury kind of confirms that he's not worth the top five pick, but if we can trade down and he's available in the early second, I wouldn't be opposed to taking him. However, I did not get my scouting buff on Briscoe or Stovall. So I'm not sure where they went, but it's not on them. And I'll quickly scroll through the league signings real quick. All right, and we're ready for the NFL draft. So the first thing in the next episode, we'll go through a short list of college players we're scouting. Uh, we'll dive more into later rounds instead of just the first rounds. And we'll get it going and hopefully get this franchise back on track. Thank you all. Don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate you all. See you in the next video.